my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I am so excited about and that is my most anticipated fall fantasy releases. I do this most anticipated video about twice a year for all the titles that will be coming out in like winter, spring, and the beginning of summer. And then I usually do one around this time of year for fall and like early winter releases. September and October tend to be months that are very heavy on the fantasy releases, especially the YA fantasy releases. So I'm here to talk about all the books that are coming out in these next few months that I am excited about. I think there's a lot of really cool titles to discuss and I'm just like love doing this video every time that I do it. So without further ado, let's get into it, starting with September. So in September, some of the books have already come out by this point because it's like mid-September when I'm putting this video up, but you know what, we can still talk about them. <laughs> the first series of books that I'm going to be talking about have come out on September 1st. So the first September release that I'm going to be talking about is Blood and Honey by Shelby Morin, which is the sequel to Serpent and Dove, which came out last year. And when I read it last year, I absolutely adored it. So in this book, we follow Louise LeBlanc, who is a white witch that has fled from her coven and is living in the city of Caesarine, trying to never use her magic and go undetected to escape from things that are hunting her down. However, when a public incident causes her to have to marry Reed, who is a Chaucer, part of a religion that has sworn at all costs to hunt down and kill all witches, she is now married. In this sequel, Lou and Reed are finally reunited. However, there are forces hunting them down from all sides, and so they must separate and go on their own individual quests. And this brings into question, will their marriage survive this separation? So yeah, I mean, I just like really love Serpent and Dove. I just thought it was a really cool YA fantasy romance, and I'm excited to see what Morin does with these characters in the sequel and where she takes the story. The next September release I have to talk about is As the Shadow Rises by Katie Rose Poole, which is the sequel to There Will Come a Darkness, which again, I read last year and loved. This is a like Roman inspired fantasy novel about five individuals who are kind of set on a collision course because of a prophecy. So in There Will Come a Darkness, the seven prophets used to rule over all the lands until 100 years ago when they mysteriously disappeared. They left one final prophecy that there will be a prophet that will either bring about the end of days or save everyone. And so we have five individuals, a prince, a killer, a once faithful leader, a gambler, and a dying girl who are set on this collision course to fulfill the prophecy. And I just thought that it was really cool. I loved reading the prophecy and seeing how the uh, different characters were going to play into it and trying to guess who is going to be the prophet. And I think that this middle book is going to be really, really cool and kind of exploring more of the world and what is going to happen with this prophecy and how things will play out. So I can't wait to read it because I just know it's going to be fantastic. Also out September 1st is Fable by Adrian Young. I have read both Sky in the Deep and The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young, and she does a lot of like sea-themed novels, which I just think is really cool. The sea is the only home that Fable has ever known, as she is the daughter of one of the most powerful merchant traders in the Narrows. Four years ago, her mother drowned in a terrible storm, and the next day her father abandoned her on a legendary island full of thieves. Fable's had to fend for herself and learn how to survive, and the only thing that is keeping her going is her goal of getting off the island and demanding her rightful place on her father's crew on the merchant ships and in order to do this she enlists the help of a young trader named west so sounds really cool also the fact that like i think that adrian young like really writes familial relationships well and now we have that this father that just like dropped his daughter off on an abandoned island i think will be really cool to explore the next september release is the lost book of the white by cassandra clare and wesley chu which is the sequel to the red scrolls of magic and it is one of the many many books in the shadowhunters chronicles so the lost book of the white takes place in between the end of the mortal instruments and before the start of the dark artifices and this is when Alex and Magnus have their first child, Max, that they are raising. 
and basically two old acquaintances break into their apartment and steal the famous Book of the White, which did make an appearance in the Mortal Instruments. And so they call in some allies to assist them on a trip to Shanghai to track down the thieves. And meanwhile, Magnus has been stabbed and the wound is like mysteriously glowing. And I think that we get Isabel, Clary, and Jace in this novel as well. So we have some more familiar faces and it's just gonna be a great Shadowhunters adventure and I'm Shadowhunters trash, so. I'm excited for it. So this next book series that I have to talk about is one that I literally just started reading last week and I'm completely obsessed. If you've seen my Twitter, you will know what I'm talking about. And I was so excited when I realized that I already had the opportunity to talk about this book in a video because like, I just, I just need to talk about it. And that is A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armitrout, which is the sequel to From Blood and Ash, which is, right now probably my favorite book of 2020 that i have read this year like oh my god i loved this so much and the sequel came out september 1st so as soon as i finish this one i literally ordered this one and i'm in the middle of it right now and after i finish filming this i'm going to go back to reading it because like i just cannot put it down i have so many annotations i read this one on my kindle otherwise it would be full of annotations as well but like whenever the next book in the series comes out i feel like i'm going to want to reread these both because like that's just how much I love it. From Blood and Ash is an adult fantasy romance, which I have been looking for many, many recommendations in that genre. If you know anything that you would like to recommend to me, please do because it might be something I'm looking into for a future video, but um, cool. So in the Kingdom of Solis, there is a maiden that is chosen from birth to usher in a new era and those role of the maiden resides on Poppy. Her life has never really been her own. She's always been forced into this role of the maiden. Never to be touched, never to be looked upon, never to speak to anyone, never to be heard, and of course, never to experience pleasure and she must remain pure. She's waiting for the day of her ascension, but she would rather be with the guards fighting back the evil that claimed her family. But she has never had this choice and she only knows her duty. So the entire future of the kingdom rests on Poppy's shoulders and that's not even something that she is sure that she wants for herself. And of course, when Hawk, a golden-eyed, handsome guard, enters her life to ensure her ascension, destiny and duty become tangled with desire and need and they challenge each other and basically everything that Poppy believes in gets turned on its head and just like, it's so, so good. And then we have the sequel, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, which I'm reading right now and it's just as good as the first one. And like, I, I cannot even tell you what this one is about because it would spoil so, so much for the first one. But like, please, if you take anything from this video, just like read the series. Thank you. The next September 1st release is A Queen of Volts by Amanda Foodie, and this is the conclusion to the Shadow Game trilogy, which consists of Ace of Shades, King of Fools, and now Queen of Volts, which is the last in the trilogy. About Ace of Shades, which I do have on my TBR. I have been wanting to read this because it just sounds really, really cool. The City of Sin is where casino families reign, gangs infest the streets, and secrets live in every shadow. Ian Salta was raised as a proper young lady who would never venture into new reign. But when her mother goes missing, she has one lead and that is Levi Glacier, a street lord and con man. And their search for clues leads them through glamorous casinos, illicit cabarets, and into the clutches of a ruthless mafia donna. So it's got a whole mafia thing going on. Apparently it's like based off of Atlantic City, which I think is really cool. And I, Definitely, definitely want to get to this series at some point in the future because it just sounds like a really fun time. The next book is out on September 8th and that is The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner and they are an author duo that writes some that writes a lot of sci-fi together. Amy Kaufman also writes sci-fi with Jay Kristoff. Prince North lives in a gleaming city in the sky held aloft by technology while Nim is the living goddess of her people on the surface. Their lives are entwined but their hearts can never be which of course is that how it's going to work out probably no this next september 1st rele release is really cool because it's one of the first books by a trans author to hit the new york times bestseller list which i just think is amazing and that is cemetery boys by aiden thomas we follow Yadriel, who has summoned a ghost and now he can't get rid of them. Yadriel is desperate to prove to his family that he could be a proper brujo. After his traditional Latinx family has a lot of problems accepting his gender. So he performs a ghost summoning ritual and of course it goes wrong and instead of summoning his cousin, he summons Julian Diaz, the school's resident bad boy who is not about to go quietly into death. 
so it just sounds really cool a very queer latinx novel and i'm so so happy that i hit the new york times bestseller list and hopefully i can get to this one soon because it just sounds amazing this next one comes out on september 29th and that is a deadly education by naomi novik and naomi novik has uprooted and spinning silver which are very well known books and i have not read them yet but i you know that's on my like eventual tbr so but this one just sounds really really cool it's dark academia the scholomance is a school for the magically gifted there are no teachers no holidays and no friendships survival is the only thing that matters you graduate or you die which you know so there are only two rules to follow don't walk the halls alone and beware of the monsters that lurk around every corner when l enrolls in the scholomance she believes that she can unlock its many secrets and she has a dark power strong enough to level mountains she would have no problem killing all of the monsters in the scholomance the problem is that her magic is so dark and may also kill all of the other students which is obviously a problem so that just sounds like really cool very october vibes so it's perfect for fall and the last book that i have on my list for september is sky hunter by marie lu talon is a striker a member of an elite fighting force for the last free nation in the world and she's a refugee from the federation that is basically this war machine of a government that has an army of mutant beasts known as ghosts and when a mysterious prisoner is brought to the capital talon senses that there's more to him than meets the eye and it turns out he could be the weapon that could save or destroy them all. Next up is October, which is a month that is also packed with wonderful fantasy releases. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I am going to be focusing mostly on YA fantasy releases since that seems to be the genre where there is a lot going on and that's the genre that I am the most plugged into, but there will be some adult fantasies like sprinkled here and there. It seems to me that the first Tuesday of the month is always like a very big release day and that tends to be like where the most books are being released. So just like an interesting notation. The first thing I'm excited about on October 6th is Monstrous Volume 5, War Child, and this is by Majory M. Liu and Sana Takeda. So this is Monstrous Volume 1 and it's art deco beauty and steampunk aesthetic or it's rather described as steampunk horror and I just like love the art style of these comics. I just think that they're so beautifully drawn and I'm just like so drawn into the story. I don't read a lot of graphic novels but I absolutely adore this series and we follow Micah Halfwolf who is a teenage survivor of a cataclysmic war between the humans and the Arcanics and we basically follow her journey as she tries to infiltrate the humans to find out more about her mother and her mother's involvement in the war and her disappearance. The next book out on October 6th is The Lives of the Saints by Leigh Bardugo and this is like a tie-in book to the Grishaverse and I'm pretty sure it's like going to be what the characters in the Shadow and Bone TV show like carry around as their book of saints so in the Christian trilogy, their religion system uh, involves these saints and their lives are chronicled in this book called The Lives of Saints. So we are getting that book with all the stories of the saints in it. So I'm Grishaverse trashed, so I will be picking up a copy. Next on October 6th is Hush by Dylan Farrow and this is a debut novel. Shay has lived a quiet life, but she's kept many fears at bay, including the fear for the disease that took her brother's life, the fear for how her dreams bleed into reality, and fear of the justice seekers that use the magic of the telling to keep the community safe. But when her mother is murdered, she can no longer pretend, and I'm pretty sure that in this book they use magic to silence people, and it has to do with that. On October 6th, we also have Kingdom of Sea and Stone by Mara Rutherford, and this is the sequel to Crown of Coral and Pearl, which I read last year and I adored. Crown of Coral and Pearl is this, follows the story of these twins, Noor and Zadie. Every generation or small ocean village, one woman is chosen to go to the mainland to become queen and is never heard from again. So in this community, beauty is prized above all others because that is how like the family of the girl that marries into the royal family is obviously very well off and then they get sent off to live on the mainland. So Nor and Zadie are these beautiful twins, but however, um, Nor, when she was younger, had an injury to her face that left her with an imperfection, a scar on her face, and so she was like considered out of the running 
for this queen role. However, her sister Zadie has won the title and unfortunately an accident becomes her so that she can no longer go. So Nora goes in her place and when she's at the mainland, she discovers that things are not exactly as they seem. It was a really cool novel about sisters and I loved the Ocean Village setting. So I'm really looking forward to the sequel. On October 13th, we have A Golden Fury by Samantha Coho. This takes place in 1792 France. Uh, Thea Hope is a teenage alchemist and her and her mother are on the cusp of discovering the secrets of the Philosopher's Stone, which would allow them to transfer lead into gold and heal all wounds. However, once they get close to uncovering the secrets, her mother destroys their progress in a fit of rage. And now Thea is determined to still unlock the secrets of the stone, even though it is said to be cursed and ominous forces will stop and nothing to gain the stone's power. So yeah, it's just like a cool little, oh. French setting alchemist book. Also out on October 13th is Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. This one seems really cool because it has to do with almost like socioeconomic things but in a fantasy novel and you'll see what I mean by that. So after Emmanuel Ragno kills the one person in Ocasia who can create water, she must find a way to save her city from dying of thirst. So Emmanuel is a daring socialite and all she wants is power. So she's about to marry her childhood best friend who is the heir to one of the wealthiest houses in Ocasia. Um, she doesn't care that they're both gay because all that she wants is the power and the marriage will afford her that. So in the city of Ocasia, everyone must sacrifice themselves to the water Kriya, the mysterious being who makes the water from blood when they get their first bruise like omen on their skin. However, Emanuela has been hiding the omen for years and on the day of her marriage, the water Kriya comes to take her for her sacrifice and Emanuela fights back and ends up killing her and now she's responsible for finding a water source for her people. So it sounds really cool that it's like kind of like, you know, you need water to live and it's a like definitely a commentary on like controlling of resources and stuff like that. So it seems really like a really interesting concept. And speaking of interesting concepts, Another really cool one that is coming out on October 13th, 2020 is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. So in 1893, there is no such thing as witches. Women instead look for the power and the ability to cast a ballot. But when the Eastwood sisters join the suffragists of New Salem, they begin to pursue forgotten words that might turn the women's movement into the witches movement. I mean, that's just like the coolest tagline I've ever heard. and. I mean, all you really have to tell me is suffragist witches and I am instantly intrigued. The thing I'm most looking forward to on October 13th is Lightbringer, which is the conclusion to the Imperium trilogy, which consists of Furyborn and Kingsbane, obviously both by the same author, Claire Legrand. And it is no secret that I adore, adore, adore this series. I just think it's so freaking cool. And I finally got a friend to read it that didn't hate it because everyone else that I recommended to doesn't like it. But it's okay. Maddie liked it. She enjoyed it. She also gave it five stars. So, you know, we're, we're getting somewhere. This is the tagline for Furyborn, by the way. Two young women centuries apart hold the power to either save their world or doom it. So, Riel Darden is best friends with the crown prince and when assassins come at him she basically exposes her ability to do all seven elements of magic and now she must perform in a trial to determine if she is the sun queen or the blood queen according to a ancient prophecy in this world the only two people that will ever possess all seven elementals are either the prophesied sun queen and or blood queen Thousands of years later, the legend of Queen Riel is basically a fairy tale to Eliana, Farakora. The Undying Empire has conquered her kingdom and she is a bounty hunter doing what she must to survive and provide for her family. Um, she thinks that she is untouchable since she started the empire until her mother disappears and now she's going to join up with the rebel forces to get her mother back. And they fight in a cosmic war that spans millennia and their stories intersect in really interesting ways. And yeah, let me read you the prophecy. It says, the gate will fall. You will know this time by the rise of two human queens, one of blood and one of light. Two queens will rise. They will carry the power of the seven. They will carry your fate in their hands. I just think it's really fascinating 
and it really does a very good character exploration of good and evil and kind of like it's both a heroine story and a villainess story and i just am so like intrigued by the way that all these moving pieces fit together and these characters i'm just like going on and on about this series because i love it so much and i'm so excited because i like actually predicted that the title was going to be lightbringer because every like title is something that has appeared in the first book and like is important to like a character in the book so like eliana in the first book is Furyborn, and they call riel kingsbane and lightbringer is another character in the series and i just knew it was going to be white and it actually the cover turned out exactly how i like kind of pictured it in my head so i don't know that's just like props to me but yes super super looking forward to that and i will probably be doing a reread of kingsbane before lightbringer but not for reborn because i reread re -read that one last year before kingsbane but i'm excited because this kingsbane is the only book where a plot twist made me cry like i was so shocked and overcome with the shock that i cried and that doesn't happen that's how I feel about that. On October 20th, we have Godstorm by Coco Ma, which I actually have an arc right here, and it's like a very like flappa arc, so I really like it. I do have Shadow Frost, but it's actually at my parents' house, because you know, I thought I'd be able to go and visit them sooner than uh, now and bring all my books back that I left there, that I read when I was left there in December, but you know, that's, that's not how life works. So this is the second book in the Shadow Frost trilogy and there is the kingdom of exaria and so in the kingdom of exaria it's everyone kind of like falls into an elemental alignment and astrin has the an ice power it's really cool but when demon attacks start plaguing the kingdom she sets out to hunt down this evil creature that is disturbing the peace with her most trusted friends but but not everyone is as they seem and it's just a really cool really fun elemental magic adventure novel and i'm really interested to see where kokoma takes our characters in this second novel it's also a really good witty bander romance which you know i'm a big fan of also on October 20th is Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston, which I read The Stars We Steal by her, and I really love that book. So this one is more of a fantasy instead of a sci-fi, which I believe she's written. Well, she's written like a lot, I think, actually. Um, the Kingdom of Valorius has been an absolute peace for many, many years. The first king made a bargain with the Lady of the Woods, and as the kingdom grew prosperous, the woods grew dark, twisted, and evil. Ceres barely escaped an attack in the woods as a child, and now she carries a small bit of the curse and the, the magic of the woods in her blood. When a new queen takes over the kingdom and changes start occurring, Ceres is forced on the run. Her only companion is a small fox from the garden, a strange and powerful bear, and the magic in her veins. It is up to her to find the Lady of the Wild and beg for a way to save her kingdom, so it just sounds like a very whimsical fairy tale-like book, and I think I'll really enjoy it. And my next most anticipated October release, Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. Carrie Maniscalco wrote Stalking Night the Ripper Chronicles, which I have right here, and I freaking love that series. Buddy read it with Isabella. Shout out to Isabella. Love you. And so this is going to be her first novel outside of the Stalking Night the Ripper series, and like, I can't wait because it just sounds really cool. In Kingdom of the Wicked, Amelia and her twin. Victoria are strenge witches that live among the humans and try to blend in. When Victoria goes missing, Amelia finds the body completely desecrated beyond belief. Amelia is devastated and set on a path for vengeance at any cost. It's then that she meets Raph, one of the wicked, a prince of hell. He claims to be on Amelia's side and is investigating a string of women's murders on the island, but with the wicked, nothing is as it seems. So it's like murder mystery and witches like the murder mysteries in Saga Chapter were always so cool so now we're throwing in like more fantasy elements instead of historical elements so and of course there is the Barnes and Noble edition as well as regular edition and I already have pre-ordered both <music> moving on into November there is a lot less than in September and October. Those two months just send, tend to be like really packed with book releases for whatever reason. So the first book out is send in November that I have on my list is Send Me Their Souls by Sarah Wolf, and it's coming out November 3rd. 
This is the conclusion to the Bring Me Their Hearts trilogy, which I actually just picked up this book the other day. So we follow Zara, who is a heartless and immortal unaging soldier that is bound to the witch Nightsinger. However, she longs for freedom, but Nightsinger has her heart in a jar that he controls. So that is until Nightsinger asks for a prince's heart in return for her own with one addendum. She's discovered infiltrating the court he will immediately destroy her heart. So, it sounds really cool. The next book out that I want to mention is How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black, and this is a short story collection in the Cruel Prince world, and I love the Cruel Prince, so I'm gonna get it. And beyond that, I, I don't really know what it's about. <laughs> the next like big day in releases in November it seems to be November 17th. So on November 17th, we have Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, which is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive, I believe. I'm not really going to even attempt to explain what it's about. I don't really know. I just know that these books are massive and I know that I will probably really enjoy them, but I'm slowly, slowly working my way through Brandon Sanderson's works. I need to get back to uh, the Mistborn saga because it's, it's been a hot minute. So yeah. The next we have The Burning God by R.F. Kuang and this is the conclusion to the Poppy War trilogy which so far consists of the Poppy War and the Dragon Republic and I actually am planning on reading this series straight through once the last book comes out because I love to read series straight through like that especially if I'm really into them. It's just kind of like nice to keep the story continually going. So and I've actually learned that the Poppy War is more based on history than I knew thanks to my friend Tiffany by Read with Tiffany and she has mentioned that she is going to be making a guide video to the Poppy War so keep an eye out for that. I will link it if it is out and if not I'll just like your channel. Rin aced the Keiju, which is an empire-wide test to find the most talented youth to studies at the academics. It was a shock to everyone because she is a war orphan and that is not expected of a war orphan. However, being a dark-skinned peasant girl from the south is not an easy thing at the Singard. She's targeted from the start for the color of her skin and her background. Um, her gender, and she's driven to desperation. She discovers she possesses a lethal, unearthly power, an aptitude for the nearly mythical art of shamanism. I mean, it just is a magic training kind of school, and it incorporates a lot of East Asian history, which I will readily admit that I'm not, you know, that educated on. So I think that this will be a good starting point for me to research more about that so that I can get better context for this book. So um, I just think fiction based in some fact can just be a really great way to stimulate your mind to learn more about certain things. So yeah, I'm you know kind of looking forward to reading up on some of this history before I begin this and then of course reading this book because I've heard it's supposed to just like completely devastate me and I know it's like following a morally gray character or it might even be like a villain origin story. What more need I say? Also on November 17th is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong and I've been seeing the cover everywhere and it just looks really cool and then I read the summary and I'm like ooh this seems really really cool and it is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920s Shanghai. Juliet Kai is a former flapper who is the heir of the Scarlet Gang. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers, which is helmed by their heir, Roma Montagov. Juliet's first love and first betrayal. When gangsters on both sides start showing signs of instability and there's whispers of contagion, madness, and monsters in the shadows, these two enemy forces must come together to save their city. Romeo and Juliet, I feel like everyone's kind of read that one. I read it in school in like the ninth grade and so I haven't seen a lot of Romeo and Juliet retellings recently, so I'm excited for this. Okay, and then the only book I really have to talk about in December is just one, and that is A Sky Beyond the Storm by Asawa Tahir, which is the conclusion to the Ember Quartet, which consists of an Ember in the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night, Reaper at the Gates, and of course this last one, A Sky Beyond the Storm, and it's out December 1st. Just like I love an Ember in the Ashes quartet, it's just so, so cool. Um, we follow Laia, who is a slave, and basically in order to save her brother, she goes undercover at this military academy. The other character that we follow is Elias, who is the top student at this ruthless military academy. 
and they are taught to be like ruthless and really oppress Laya's people. However, he doesn't really agree with what's going on and he doesn't want to be in the position that he is in and it's their story of them coming together and kind of like the political maneuverings that go along in this empire as well as with like all the different class struggles and like it's just very very well done and I love the series just like I'm probably gonna reread A Reaper at the Gates before A Sky Beyond the Storm. Um, I reread Ember in the Ashes and Torch Against the Night before Reaper at the Gates and like I remember Reaper in the Gates in like two is it like three years ago it came out? No two years ago? Either way, it's been a while since it came out and um, I just, I was devastated reading it. So I'm gonna re-devastate myself and then read the last book and probably be even more devastated. So. And there you have it. Those are all the books that I am anticipating being released this fall. There's always so much new and exciting literature coming out and I just love talking about new releases. It makes me really excited and it really makes me happy to share it with you guys. If you've made it to the end of this video, please just comment down below which book you are most intrigued about. If there are any other fantasy books that are coming out this fall that intrigue you but I didn't include on your list, like please let me know down below because I am always open to learning about even more books because we all need a never ending TBR pile, am I right? So with that being said, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.